सो हियर कम्स द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इन सीवीएस एंड दट कार्डियक साइकिल आई थिंक इट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन कार्डियोवास्कुलर सिस्टम नॉट ओनली फ्रॉम एंट्रेंस एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू आई मीन वी सी एवरी ईयर एट लीस्ट वन और टू क्वेश्चन दैट आर डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक और रिलेटेड टू दिस टॉपिक ऑफ द कार्डियक साइकिल एंड इन फैक्ट अदरवाइज ऑल्सो इन मेडिसिन इन फार्मैक वेरियस अदर सब्जेक्ट यू नीड अ क्लियर कट अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द कार्डियक साइकिल एंड इट्स इवेंट्स एंड द प्रेशर एंड वॉल्यूम चेंजेस ड्यूरिंग द कार्डियक साइकिल सो लेट्स uh understand this topic in detail and uh, let's just see what mcqs have come uh, in the recent past for instance uh, second heart sound occurs in which phase of the cardiac cycle that's one question which has been asked in the past and the options are um proto diastole isovolumic relaxation first rapid filling or diastasis you want to answer that right now well it's a tricky question but the answer is proto diastole let's see why why it is so um then uh, the other questions like uh, factual questions there are four heart sounds given which of them is called as the atrial sound atrial heart sound or atrial sound s1 s2 s3 or s4 the answer is s4 fourth heart sound why we will see all that and much much more in this particular discussion now first of all try to understand or you already know this that uh, the ecg are uh, the electrical changes ecg uh, tells us about the electrical changes in the heart and those changes occur first and then these events occur these are mechanical events in the heart let that be very clear because uh, very often the students just tend to mix up uh, yeah depolarization means systole repolarization means diastole something like that so uh, take that confusion away once and for all the events in the ecg the depolarization and repolarization they occur first for instance ventricular depolarization qrs complex will occur first and then the ventricle goes into systole so we are talking about those mechanical events when we say cardiac cycle okay first the introduction cardiac cycle means the changes that sweep over the heart in one single heart beat and repeated cyclically in the subsequent beats beat after beat after beat same changes will occur in the same sequential manner that is the cardiac cycle so one cardiac cycle means one heart beat and the changes that occur what is the duration of the heart beat or cardiac cycle it's important that we know the duration and its importance significance so look normal heart rate is 72 beats per minute that means 72 beats occur in 60 seconds that means one heart beat will have a duration of 60 upon 72 and that is a uh, 0.8 seconds so normal cardiac cycle duration is 0.8 seconds why uh, i just said the duration is significant because as the heart rate goes increasing the duration of cardiac cycle will go decreasing okay that's very obvious to understand i mean if the heart rate is 144 beats per minute then each heart beat will have half of this duration 0.4 seconds okay so please uh, keep this in mind and then i take the next point 0.8 seconds duration so uh, the next is there are basically two events that occur in the chambers of the heart 
सिस्टोल एंड डायस्टोल सिस्टोल मीन्स कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑफ दैट चैम्बर सो इफ आई से वेंटिकुलर सिस्टोल वेंटिकल वेंटिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एंड इट मीन्स इट मीन्स टू थिंग्स वन इज प्रेशर इन साइड द चैम्बर इंक्रीजेज एंड द ब्लड इज इजेक्टेड आउट ऑफ दैट चैम्बर डायस्टोल मीन्स रिलैक्सेशन ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर चैम्बर इफ आई से वेंटिकुलर डायस्टोल मीन्स वेंटिकल्स आर रिलैक्सिंग एंड दिस ऑल्सो मीन्स टू थिंग्स there is a decrease of pressure in that chamber during diastole and blood is received by that chamber uh, during the diastole so basically two events uh now making a very important point please focus on this point just now i said that as the heart rate goes on increasing the cardiac cycle duration decreases right that means systole and diastole now now i am talking about ventricles to be more precise because look atria are the primary pumps they only send the blood toward the ventricles it's the ventricles which pump the blood out of the heart and therefore when i say heart is pumping out the blood essentially i mean ventricle ventricles okay so please keep this in mind now with that try to understand this at higher heart rates cardiac cycle duration goes decreasing that means systole and diastole both will decrease in the duration ventricular systole ventricular diastole both will uh, both uh, durations will decrease but diastole will suffer more as compared to systole and uh, remember i'm talking about the ventricular uh, diastole and ventricular systole so let me just write this point here at higher heart rates both systole and diastole are going to decrease okay but the point is diastole suffers in duration uh in terms of duration diastole suffers more as compared to systole systole diastole both durations will decrease because the cardiac cycle duration has, has decreased but diastole duration will decrease to a much greater extent as compared to systole uh, decrease duration right so uh that was an essential point that uh, i wanted to make okay uh next this was introduction now let's see the events in the cardiac cycle in detail you know we have discussed this in the introductory chapter and conducting system of the heart that uh, basically a heart is made up of two syncytia both atria make one syncytium and they contract together and both ventricles make another syncytium and they contract together so these are the two syncytia in the heart and therefore these events also will occur as atrial events and ventricular events so for that entire 0.8 seconds duration something is happening in the atria and at the same time something is happening in the ventricles it's at the same time right so atrial events and ventricular events going on for that same 0.8 seconds duration let's see the durations of the systole and diastole atrial systole 0.1 second atrial diastole for the remaining 0.7 seconds then ventricular systole 0.3 seconds ventricular diastole 0.5 seconds so we basically have four events atrial systole atrial diastole ventricular systole ventricular diastole 
बट दे शुड बी सीन इंडिपेंडेंटली एज आई मैं जस्ट नाउ बिकॉज वेरी ऑफन आई एम एम्फोसाइजिंग दिस इज बिकॉज वेरी ऑफन द स्टूडेंट यूज टू आस्क मी दिस क्वेश्चन इन फर्स्ट ईयर दैट इफ देर आर फोर इवेंट्स देन देर एडिशन should be pointed seconds something like that students uh, would misconstrue this that uh, there are four events in one cardiac cycle in one heartbeat so their addition their total should be pointed seconds because the entire duration is pointed seconds no let that be clear as i mentioned just now actually it's very obvious and simple basic fact that there are two syncytia and for that entire pointed seconds duration something is happening in the atria and at the same time something is happening in the ventricles and now therefore we will understand those events in detail which uh, with, with with the diagram that you might have seen previously uh, in the notes or somewhere else that there is a circular diagram that depicts the events in the cardiac cycle let's draw the two circles to uh, understand the events and their chronology a uh, inner circle the inner circular strip we will write atrial events and outer strip we will write the ventricular events next thing entire circle represents 0.8 seconds one heartbeat one cardiac cycle okay so if i start from the 12 o'clock position and go on describing the events and then i go back it's 0.8 seconds one heartbeat we will divide this into eight equal parts that means each part will be 0.1 second right entire circle 0.8 seconds divided into eight equal parts that means each part is 0.1 second right and now we'll see the events you know what is the benefit of this diagram by this diagram we get to know if something is happening in the atria then what is happening in the ventricles at the same time we can see here something happening in the atria what is happening in the ventricle at that exact time we can see that by the inner circle and the outer circle so let's start first event uh, okay from the inner strip we are starting the atrial events so let's start the atrial events atrial systole 0.1 second so one part this is atrial systole let's write it down here the first event atria contract and pump the blood into the ventricles simple and that's for 0.1 second but then uh let me tell you a new type of contraction you know in skeletal muscle we have described two types of contractions uh, isometric contraction and isotonic contraction in this particular chapter we will see two more types of contractions atrial systole is sometimes referred to as myotonic contraction so what is myotonic contraction myo you have heard the word meiosis as in reduction division reducing right so myo means reducing and therefore myotonic contraction means reducing strength of contraction the contraction in which the strength of contraction goes on decreasing such contractions are called as myotonic contractions so what is what is uh, uh, what it has got to do with the atrial systole yes atrial systole is like that the 0.1 second of atrial systole actually is of two parts first 0.05 seconds first half or first 0.05 seconds is called as dynamic atrial systole majority of the fibers are contracting in that first half and most of the blood is sent from atria to ventricles 
in that first half. Then the later half, later 0.05 seconds is called as a dynamic atrial systole means the contraction strength reduced and uh, not much blood sent during that later half so um, you can see here that initial part of the contraction was stronger and then it went decreasing so this was a reducing strength of contraction and such contractions are called as myotonic contraction so uh, if at some MCQ they ask you this question, you must at least know what is this type of contraction. Right. That was atrial systole 0.1 second. And uh, we have already divided it. 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. That's atrial systole. Then next atrial diastole 0 0.7 seconds. Right. So seven parts. Atrial diastole 0.7 seconds. So, seven parts atrial diastole. Atria relax and receive the blood. So, that's atrial diastole 0.7 seconds. Atria relax and receive the blood. Right atrium receives the blood from the venae cavae. Left atrium receives the blood from the pulmonary vein, the oxygenated blood. These were the atrial events. So, atrial events will go on like that. Atrial systole, atrial diastole, atrial systole, atrial diastole. Now coming to the ventricular events, which is the major part of this particular discussion. Uh, first, ventricular systole, 0.3 seconds, so three parts, 0.3 seconds, let's show the 0.3 seconds, three parts. So the first of all, uh, ventricular events on the outer strip, okay, and three parts, so let's show the three parts. That's ventricular systole 2 and 3. Three parts ventricular systole. Uh, have you noted one point from which, from where we have started the ventricular systole? Af at the end of the atrial systole. Where atrial systole has ended, we have started the ventricular systole. Yes. It's very obvious that the ventricular systole starts after the atrial systole is finished. Atrial systole is over. Right? And why is that? That's because of the AV nodal delay. Isn't it? AV nodal delay, uh, I mean AV node delays the impulse transmission from the atria into the ventricles. So, Atria are excited ahead of ventricles. That means atria will also contract first, pump the blood into the ventricles and then the ventricular systole or ventricular contraction will start. Okay. So, ventricular systole starts after the atrial systole is over and 0.3 seconds. So, three parts. Now, uh, this is obviously beneficial because atria send all the blood that is possible and then the ventricular systole will start. Okay. Uh, first, as we have said, systole means rise of pressure. So, at the onset of ventricular systole, ventricular pressure begins to rise. And soon, Ventricular pressure becomes more than the atrial pressure. Right? And therefore, what happens? AV valves close. So, let's write down here. At the onset of ventricular systole, uh, well, if you have forgotten some part of cardiac physiology, let me just remind you that 
there are two sets of valves av valves the tricuspid and the mitral valve and the semilunar valves aortic and pulmonary valves and the most important statement is coming up if you have forgotten it please uh, revise it with me the valve opening or closure depends on the pressure gradients between the chambers valve opening or closure depends on the pressure gradients between the chambers i mean if the atrial pressure is more than the ventricular pressure this is just uh, i am just uh, adding it as a revision when as so, as long as atrial pressure is more than the ventricular pressure the av valves will remain open and the blood will go from atria to ventricles but when the ventricular pressure becomes more than the atrial pressure then the av valves close just a revision just a quick revision and you can understand why this is happening because valve is basically meant uh, to uh, to allow the blood to flow in one direction and prevent the back flow of blood in the opposite direction isn't it so uh, when the ventricular pressure becomes more than the atrial pressure blood is likely to go from ventricle to atria and that should be prevented and that's the job of the valves so av valves close okay similar with the semilunar valves uh, as long as right ventricular pressure is more than the pulmonary artery pressure the pulmonary valve will remain open and the blood will be ejected from right ventricle to pulmonary artery but if the pulmonary artery pressure is more than the right ventricular pressure the pulmonary valve will close yeah to prevent that backflow of blood right now let's uh, write down these events at the onset of ventricular systole as we saw just now first thing that happens is ventricular pressure becomes more than the atrial pressure and then av valves therefore close this closure of the av valves will produce first heart sound s1 so we know two things about the first heart sound it is produced at the onset of ventricular systole and it is produced by the closure of the av valves now then av valves have got closed but semilunar valves have not yet opened look ventricular systole is meant for what it is meant for ejection of blood into the vessels the aorta and the pulmonary artery and for that to happen the semilunar valves have to be opened right now they have not yet opened so we have a situation whereby av valves have got closed but semilunar valves have, have are yet to open and therefore all four valves are closed and ventricles are contracting like a closed chamber it is called as isovolumic contraction so isovolumic contraction uh, is the volume will remain the same in the ventricles it will not change means blood will not be ejected out why because semilunar valves have not yet opened and av valves have got closed all four valves are closed and ventricles are contracting like a closed chamber so that's called as isovolumic contraction now those who have done their physiology cycle once and who are reading medicine currently let me just uh, add a little point here which i will revise once again later on when we discuss the left ventricular pressure volume loops i will revise this point once again but just for a correlation i am adding this point here also again uh, see uh, what we are saying is consider left ventricle okay 
माइट्रल वाल्व हैज गॉट क्लोज ए वी वाल्व माइट्रल वाल्व ए वी वाल्व हैज गॉट क्लोज बट एटिक वाल्व इज येट टू ओपन सेमिलर वाल्व आर येट टू ओपन एटिक वाल्व इज येट टू ओपन आई एम ओनली टॉकिंग अबाउट द लेफ्ट एंट्रिकल राइट नाउ ओके वाई दिस एटिक वाल्व हैज नॉट येट ओपन See, mitral valve has got closed. Aortic valve is yet to open, so ejection has not started. Why this aortic uh, valve has not yet opened? Because left ventricular pressure. Please note this point, okay? Left ventricular pressure, although it is rising, it has not become greater than the aorta pressure. Okay? Please realize this once again. semilunar valves have not yet opened this is isovolumic contraction all four valves closed why semilunar valves have not yet opened because ventricular pressure it's although it is rising but it has not become more than the aorta and pulmonary artery pressure so i'm taking the left ventricle left ventricular pressure rising but not become greater than the aorta pressure which means what which means in this phase in the isovolumic contraction phase aorta pressure is still greater than the left ventricular pressure isn't it yes left ventricular pressure is still less than the aorta pressure so valve could not be opened now imagine a condition called as aortic regurgitation that is the whole point that i wanted to uh, bring your attention to aortic regurgitation if the aortic valve is regurgitant imagine what do you expect to happen during this phase yes aorta pressure more than the left ventricular pressure and aortic valve regurgitant means blood will regurgitate and go back from aorta back into the left ventricle during this phase okay normally the blood volume does not change we have seen the normal event i am just making a point here that if there is aortic regurgitation then the blood will go from aorta into the left ventricle during this phase and why i have told you the reason okay come back to the normal cardiac cycle this was just an additional point ventricular pressure is rising and soon it is great enough to open the semilunar valves so semilunar valves open isovolumic contraction over semilunar valves open now the ejection of blood will start okay so ejection will happen in two phases first there would be a rapid ejection and the later part will be reduced ejection in these two phases the blood will be ejected out left ventricle will eject it into the aorta right ventricle will eject it into the pulmonary artery and even this is quite uh, easy to understand why the first part is rapid ejection and later is reduced because as the ejection starts imagine left ventricular pressure was building up and then uh, or ventricular pressure was building up and the valves open semilunar valves open that time aorta and pulmonary artery was empty so initially the blood will be ejected out rapidly but then as the blood gets filled into the vessels aorta and pulmonary artery now is getting filled with the blood then later the rate of ejection will reduce ejection will happen but little slowly because now that those vessels have got filled with the blood so that's uh, why first rapid ejection then the reduced ejection and uh, 0.3 seconds if you see the time durations 
isovolumic contraction 0.05 seconds then rapid ejection 0.11 and uh, reduced ejection 0.14 seconds that's uh, the ventricular systole now coming to the ventricular diastole ventricular diastole ventricle will begin to relax and they will receive the blood 0.5 seconds ventricular diastole 0.5 seconds so five parts ventricular diastole ventricular diastole ventricular diastole ventricular diastole and ventricular diastole right five parts 0.5 seconds uh, before i tell you the ventricular diastole and we start uh, looking at the ventricular diastole i just need to add one little point related to the ventricular systole i'm just going back i told you i'm going to tell you two new types of contractions uh, first was neotonic contraction atrial systole similarly another type of contraction that i wanted to mention is ventricular systole and particularly the ejection during the ejection ventricular systole is a type of contraction which is called as oxotonic contraction oxotonic contraction is exactly opposite to that of neotonic contraction what is oxotonic contraction of the muscle increasing strength of contraction as the contraction proceeds strength of contraction goes on increasing such contractions are called as oxotonic contractions and ventricular systole is typically said to be the oxotonic contraction uh, why it's called as uh, oxotonic contraction why the strength goes on increasing the reason is obvious look as the systole starts and then the ejection starts blood starts getting filled into the aorta and pulmonary artery okay ejection started blood started filling into the vessels that means there will be resistance for the further output resistance for the further ejection of blood initially the aorta and pulmonary artery was empty so initially blood will go easily but then for the later part there will be a resistance there will be an outflow resistance and the ventricles have to continue to eject the blood in the face of that resistance they are facing that uh, resistance for the further ejection and in the face of that resistance uh, also ventricle has to continue to eject out the blood therefore they need to increase their strength of contraction i mean i'm i'm just telling you the logic behind it that they have to uh, contract stronger and stronger to push the later quantities of blood or later part of the blood because they are going to because the ejection will now face the resistance already some blood has been filled into those vessels so such contractions are called as uh, oxotonic contraction so please remember ventricular systole as a type of contraction called as oxotonic well that was ventricular systole i just uh, went back a little and explained to you the oxotonic contraction now coming to the ventricular diastole 0.5 seconds so five parts one two three four five okay first thing that i want you to note in this particular uh, part is that for most part of the ventricular diastole atria are also in diastole that's the benefit of this diagram we can see what's happening in the other chambers so for most part of the ventricular diastole you can see here atrial diastole going on atria are also in diastole which means what which means it's a combined diastole of the heart means 
ब्लड कम्स फ्रॉम द पेरीफेरी गोज इन टू द एट्रिया एंड गोज इन टू द वेंट्रिकल्स दैट्स हाउ इट हैपन्स फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ द वेंट्रिकुलर डायस्टोल ओनली लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द वेंट्रिकुलर डायस्टोल यू कैन सी यूर लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द वेंट्रिकुलर डायस्टोल corresponds with atrial systole coincides with atrial systole means what at that point of time atria contract okay and that means atria contract means what they pump the blood actively into the ventricles first uh, four parts you can see atria are also in diastole and last part of the ventricular diastole that is the time when atria contract and actively send the blood into the ventricles so let me just uh, write its Im implication over here 75 to 80% of the filling ventricular filling is passive we saw that just now and only the last 20 to 25% filling is active that is because of the atrial contraction so keep that in mind it can be a question how much ventricular filling is active that's the answer right now let's start the ventricular diastole uh, and its events now first event is a uh, backflow of blood sudden change in the direction of the blood look so far ventricles were in systole okay now suddenly the ventricular diastole has started so that means ventricular pressure begins to fall and therefore the blood that was ejected out begins to come back toward the ventricles right because blood knows only one thing to go from high to low pressure so suddenly the ventricular pressure is beginning to fall blood that has uh, gone forward will now start coming back toward the ventricle this short phase of uh, sudden change in the direction of blood or sudden backflow of blood is called as proto diastole so first phase of the diastole protos means one and therefore first phase of the diastole proto diastole sudden backflow or sudden uh, change in the direction of blood but what is the purpose of the valves valves are supposed to stop this blood going back into the ventricles so semi lunar valves will close semi lunar valves i mean aortic and pulmonary valves will close and that closure of the semi lunar valves let's write it down here semi lunar valves close and uh, that closure of semi lunar valves will produce another heart sound which is the s2 second heart sound so we know two things about the second heart sound it is produced at the onset of ventricular diastole and it is produced by the closure of the semi lunar valves right now i had asked you the question at the start of this uh, discussion second heart sound occurs in which phase of the cardiac cycle and uh, the answer is proto diastole why because proto diastole ends with the uh, second heart sound proto diastole ends with the closure of the semi lunar valves so, so technically speaking it uh, second heart sound occurs in the proto diastole phase well then semi lunar valves have got closed diastole is occurring so ventricles are supposed to receive the blood from the atria but that cannot start yet why because av valves which got closed at the start of ventricular systole they are still closed so semi lunar valves have got closed but av valves are yet to open av valves are also closed 
so all four valves are closed and before that why av valves have not yet opened why filling has not started yet because ventricular pressure although it is falling it has not gone below the atrial pressure yet see at the start of ventricular systole ventricular pressure became more than the atrial pressure now it has begun to decrease it has begun to fall but still it has not ventricular pressure has not become less than the atrial pressure and therefore av valves could not open yet so semilunar valves closed but av valves are also closed all four valves are closed and ventricles are relaxing like a closed chamber so that will be called as isovolumic relaxation isovolumic ventricular volume cannot change they cannot receive blood from anywhere because all four valves are closed so that's isovolumic relaxation now again i want to add something to this on the sidelines of this discussion isovolumic relaxation it means what av valves have not yet opened why they have not yet opened because ventricular pressure is still greater than the atrial pressure yeah that means imagine atrial pressure is less and ventricular pressure is more isovolumic relaxation okay now consider another condition called as mitral regurgitation mitral regurgitation mitral valve regurgitant mitral valve regurgitant what do you expect to happen in the phase of isovolumic relaxation in the condition called as mitral regurgitation what will you expect what will happen in isovolumic relaxation yes the blood will go regurgitate from ventricle from left ventricle to the left atrium during isovolumic relaxation in the condition called mitral regurgitation okay we are discussing normal cardiac cycle i'm just adding a few points which we will discuss later on again so because ventricular pressure is greater than the atrial pressure in mitral regurgitation blood will go from left ventricle to left atrium during isovolumic relaxation so we saw that just i am making up one small sentence and then we will move on in the uh, regurgitant valve conditions in the regurgitation regurgitation conditions there cannot be true isovolumic contraction and true isovolumic relaxation ventricles cannot remain isovolumic because the valves are leaking okay so uh, just remember this point we will discuss it again in left ventricular pressure volume loops we will discuss aortic and mitral regurgitation that time this comes again however we are right now talking about the normal cardiac cycle events so isovolumic relaxation ventricular pressure was falling finally what will happen is ventricular pressure goes below the atrial pressure it was decreasing 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 now it has become less than the atrial pressure so what do you expect to happen av valves will open now finally av valves open and as the av valves open the ventricular filling will start ventricular filling starts first phase is called as first rapid filling first rapid filling why rapid see it's quite obvious av valves mitral and tricuspid valves the av valves were closed for most of the duration 
isn't it and therefore blood coming from the periphery had accumulated in the atria isn't it for most part the av valves were closed right from the ventric uh, start of ventricular systole they were closed so blood that came it just accumulated in the atria and therefore as soon as the av valves open there is first gush of blood rush of blood from atria to ventricles and that that first gush of blood is called as first rapid filling now this rapid filling produces the turbulence that rush of blood and that produces the sound called as s3 third art sound then after that first gush of blood has happened now see here ventricle in diastole and atria are also in diastole and first gush of blood has gone from atria to ventricles so there is not much filling for this part uh, or this that time duration and therefore that is called as diastasis 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 means diastole stasis and diastole stasis means not much filling not much filling can happen because already one uh, set of filling has happened uh, one gush of blood has happened and since atria and ventricles both are in diastole not much filling can happen in this phase atria are, are in diastole that time okay and then last part of the ventricular diastole coincides with atrial systole we have seen that already and therefore atria will contract and there will be one more gush of blood from atria to ventricles and that will be called as last rapid filling some people call it second rapid filling let's say ra last uh, rapid filling this is because of the atrial systole and this rapid filling will produce another sound that turbulence of blood flow will uh, create one more sound which is called as s4 fourth heart sound and therefore i had asked you one more question which of the following is called as the atrial sound it's the s4 because it is caused by the atrial contraction and therefore the turbulence of blood from atria to ventricles so s4 is called as the atrial sound but of course remember four sounds are uh, normally produced in a cardiac cycle but only two can be heard clinically right so uh, first and second heart sounds are heard clinically but four are produced actually so these were the events in a cardiac cycle next we will discuss the pressure and volume changes during a cardiac cycle so we are going to discuss uh, arterial pulse because uh, events in the heart are responsible for the arterial pulse wave then we will also see the atrial pressure changes and the jvp and then the left ventricular pressure volume loops so that will be the second part of this particular discussion so we have discussed the events in the cardiac cycle now the second section is the pressure and volume changes during a cardiac cycle i will be describing uh, three pressure and volume changes or at three different places we will first see the arterial pulse why should i describe it here it's because the pulse wave is generated because of the pressure changes in the cardiac chambers and therefore uh, it can be correlated well then atrial pressure changes as recorded over the jvp and uh, of course left ventricular pressure volume changes in the form of pv loops as they are commonly known let's start with the first one arterial pulse tracing well uh, the instrument that records the arterial pulse is called as a sphygmograph or to be more precise dagen's sphygmograph 
and uh, the most commonly selected artery for that is the radial artery of course if you look at the pulse tracing it appears like this first peak then another peak then the downstroke and then this this is how arterial pulse will appear over the radial artery a peripheral artery now i just want your attention to be focused on the fact that at different places in the circulation the pulse wave form will be different you know first of all it is the left ventricular pressure changes which are generating these pulse wave forms everywhere in the in the vascular tree so look at the left ventricle its pressure wave form will be something like this rise of pressure fall of pressure systole diastole if you look at the carotid artery pulsation which is closer to the heart it will appear like this systole then fall of pressure then a notch and then the remaining part so this in the left ventricle itself then the carotid artery pulsation and if you go farther away uh, from the heart from the left ventricle what will appear is something like this first peak then the downstroke then one more peak then the downstroke a notch and uh, the remaining part of the downstroke so this is at the radial artery the point is it's the same systole and diastole in the left ventricle which is generating different wave forms at different places why is that let's try to understand systole rise of pressure diastole fall of pressure so left ventricle will simply record something like this but if you look at the carotid artery pulsation there is a notch uh, commonly called as incisura so systole the rise of pressure then the fall of pressure initially as you can see the proto diastole has caused it you know at the start of the diastole the first event proto diastole it causes sudden change in the direction of the blood and therefore fall of pressure in the carotid artery then sudden closure of the semilunar valves will produce a notch that closure of semilunar valves will produce a notch and then the remaining part of the diastole so that's how it happens in the carotid artery and now let's look at the radial artery pulsation it shows the following uh, wave forms the first peak is called as the percussion wave p the percussion wave then the next peak is called as t the tidal wave then you have a notch the dichrotic notch and then the remaining part is called as the dichrotic wave so the point is that there are two peaks which are appearing here why is that you can think over this and i'll give you the hint what could be the answer if you feel the radial pulsation whenever you feel the pulse you remember you feel it by three fingers the proximal finger is to compress the vessel wall so that the pulse becomes prominent middle finger is to actually feel the pulse what is the function of the distal finger think it through and then i'll uh, tell you the answer to that why there is an another peak which is seen yes the distal finger is to prevent retrograde pulsations coming from the palmar arterial arch so it is to prevent that that you keep the finger over here but in the case of actually recording it see what happens first peak the first or true peak is called as the percussion wave 
and uh, it's a true systolic peak it's because of the rise of pressure in the left ventricle a pulse wave gets created and gets transmitted along the vascular tree to the periphery t is the tidal wave now what happens is this is because of oscillation of the vessel wall caused by meeting of the ongoing pulse and the reflected pulse yes that is why i had asked you to, to think about that uh, distal finger while you feel the radial pulse what happens is that the first pulse wave went up to the periphery and gets reflected back and then the second pulse wave which is the ongoing pulse wave and this reflected pulse wave will meet at different points and will create oscillation of the vessel wall of different amplitudes the vessel wall will oscillate with different amplitudes at different points in the circulatory tree but the point is because of that ongoing wave and reflected wave uh, meeting and causing oscillation of the vessel wall that creates another uh, peak in the radial artery recording so just an additional uh, wave which is seen so that was uh, arterial pulse well of course let's uh, complete the discussion dichrotic notch the notch is because of the closure of the semilunar valves and then the remaining part is called as dichrotic wave so that's a diastole this entire duration up to the dichrotic notch is the systole and then the remaining part is the diastole uh, don't go on the time durations in this particular diagram you know the systole is 0.3 seconds and diastole is 0.5 seconds so that was just a uh, representative diagram okay but keep this in mind that uh, the ongoing pulse and the reflected pulse the previous pulse that got reflected from the periphery they do meet at various points in the circulatory tree that was the point of this discussion now coming to the atrial pressure changes atrial pressure changes uh, it's a very important topic very commonly the questions have been asked on this and let me give you the sample questions first question atrial wave forms or pressure forms are being recorded so v wave of course is there in the uh, atrial pressure changes v wave of the left atrium or in the left atrium is larger as compared to a v wave of the right atrium and the question is why is that why is the v wave in the left atrium is larger as compared to v wave of the right atrium you know uh, atrial pressure changes are recorded from both right atrium as well as left atrium and the wave forms are similar only thing is the v wave is larger in the left atrium so question is why is that and the options given are a because the left side it has got higher pressure compared to right side or b because mitral valve has got a different dynamics compared to tricuspid valve or c because left atrium receives the blood from the lungs and d because left side of the heart pumps the blood into the aorta which is a high pressure vessel so which of them was the correct answer according to you the answer was left atrium receives the blood from the lungs so larger wave form gets recorded in the left side or in the left atrium why we will see that in some time the second question central venous pressure cvp or right atrial pressure is being recorded and the question is what are the changes that happen with breathing 
in the central venous pressure. So choose the correct statement of the following. CVP changes with respiration. CVP changes with breathing. Uh, means inspiration and expiration. So I am giving you the four options. You have to select the correct one. E is equal to plus 6. I is equal to plus 2. E expiration. I inspiration. E is equal to minus 6. I is equal to minus 2. Then E is equal to plus 6. I is equal to minus 2. E is equal to minus 6. I is equal to plus 2. Expiration, inspiration and what are the changes that happen in the right atrial pressure with this inspiration and expiration. So, I am sure most of you are thinking of C, this C option as the correct answer, right? Because your thought is going towards that minus 2. Inspiration creates negative pressure, intrathoracic pressure and therefore you are thinking of that and expiration positive pressure. No, that's not the correct answer. This A option, that's the correct answer. Why is that? We will see that also. But uh, just a quick clarification is that uh, right atrial pressure remains above zero. So otherwise also, look, we are not asking intrathoracic pressure. So you should not think of minus. We are talking of the right atrial pressure. It's something like this. Right atrium and the lungs and the heart situated between the two lungs. So what happens is with inspiration, there is distension of the lungs and therefore the atrium will be pulled. Lungs are distending. So atrium will be pulled and that means its pressure will fall. Okay. Right atrium being pulled. You can imagine that. And pressure falls. And with expiration, the lungs are recoiling back. So they will compress the atrium and its pressure will rise. Right atrial pressure will increase. So that's why expiration, the pressure rises. And inspiration, the pressure falls. Once you have understood that, then and it always remains above zero. So look, if the right atrial pressure goes below zero, what will happen then? The atrial wall will be pulled inward like that. If there is a minus pressure, the wall will get sucked in. But that does not happen. It remains above zero and uh, expiration, the pressure increases. Inspiration, the pressure falls and therefore answer is A. I'm sure what you are thinking. Most of you are thinking right now that and you are going to ask me this question, sir. We have heard that with deep inspiration, more blood, venous blood is sucked towards the right side of the heart and right atrium and right side of the heart gets filled with more blood. And if it gets filled with more blood, its pressure should rise. And I'm saying pressure falls with inspiration. That's what you are thinking. Yes, but that's not a correct logic. It is like putting the cart before the horse. Look, because the pressure falls in the right atrium, therefore more blood gets sucked in to the right atrium. Okay, it's not the other way around that more blood gets sucked towards the right side of the heart and therefore its pressure rises. No, 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 no. no. Pressure falls and then the blood gets sucked into the right side of the heart. So please remember these are the pressures and therefore the right atrial pressure which is reflected as JVP shows the right atrial pressure. So 0 to 5 centimeters of water plus or minus 5 centimeters of water that plus or minus 5 is for breathing. So 0 to 10 centimeters of water that's what you can say or if you want in millimeters of mercury it's uh, 0 to 2 millimeters of mercury or 0 to 5 centimeters of water because 1 mm of Hg is 1.36 centimeters of water. Let's now see the pulse wave forms. First of all, right atrial pressure is recorded from internal jugular vein. 
in the form of jugular venous pulse. The pulse wave form tells us the story about the pressure changes in the right atrium. Why? Simple. Because right atrium is where the blood is drained by the superior vena cava and internal jugular vein joins the superior vena cava. Now in this entire course from the internal jugular vein up to the right atrium, there are no valves and therefore there is no pressure drop from the right atrium up to the internal jugular vein. It means the pressure changes which happen in the right atrium will get reflected as such as it is over the internal jugular vein and therefore we can uh, safely say that the jugular venous pulse tracing is a correct reflection of right atrial pressure changes. Coming to the left atrial pressure changes, left atrial pressure changes uh, can be recorded as PCWP, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Yes, I had to write it because um, I was taking a lecture and uh, in the break some student came and asked me sir about the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. He had written the notes and he showed me the notes in which it was wedge was written like this. So pulmonary capillary wedge pressure reflects the left atrial pressure changes. Let's try to understand this. Look, left atrium cannot be accessed directly. Okay. We can access the right atrium directly because if you put a catheter into a vein and advance it, it will reach the right atrium. Left atrium cannot be accessed like that directly. So, how do we then know about the pressure changes? Okay. Insert a catheter into a vein, catheter with a balloon tip. It's put into a vein and uh, it's uh, advanced to the heart, to the right side of the heart. The catheter reaches the right side of the heart, right atrium, right ventricle and from there into the pulmonary artery. Now this balloon which is inflated, it will snugly fit at some point in that pulmonary circulation or pulmonary vessel. It creates a wedge. Okay, it creates a wedge. It wedges there. And that means from that point up to the left atrium, now there will be no blood flow for some time. Temporarily, okay, temporarily the blood flow has been obstructed by this wedge that has been created. It means what? It means after a few seconds you see that since there is no blood flow, there is no pressure drop, no pressure change. So, after a few seconds, if you record a pressure over here in the pulmonary capillary, pulmonary vessel, then it will be the same as the left atrial pressure. As there is no pressure drop, pressure difference between that point where the wedge has been created artificially by us and uh, up to the left atrium, no pressure drop. So, that uh, pressure at that point will be same as the left atrial pressure. Okay, so that's one point. Please remember therefore pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is not a naturally occurring pressure. Look, pulmonary capillary pressure is something different. Pulmonary capillary pressure naturally exists. It's about 15 mm of Hg. Pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is not a naturally occurring pressure. We have created by our manure. This, this kind of pressure. So that's uh, the left atrial pressure recorded as PCWP. And as we saw right atrial pressure, the left atrial pressure is 5 mm of Hg or 5 to 8 centimeters of water. That's the left atrial pressure. Now coming to the uh, pressure wave forms in the atria. Uh, let's understand this that the left atrium and right atrium they both will record the same uh, pressure changes. Okay, It's the same cardiac cycle and therefore same 
waveforms will get recorded in the right atrium as well as left atrium. So, uh, for the time being, I am taking right atrium and uh, therefore the JVP, jugular venous pulse tracing. First point, we are talking about the right atrial or atrial pressure changes and atrium shows two events, systole and diastole. So, it should have appeared something like this, systole and diastole. Systole for 0.1 second in the atrium and uh, diastole 0.7 seconds. That's how it should have appeared. Rise of pressure, fall of pressure. But what happens is during the atrial diastole, two events in the ventricle will cause rise of pressure in the atrium. And therefore, even as the pressure was falling in the atrium, it will rise twice. Twice you will see uh, another rise in the pressure of the right atrium and therefore the atrial pressure or JVP will appear something like this rise of pressure then fall then again rise then fall then again rise okay. So you see this is the uh, JVP jugular venous pulse let's draw it again. Three peaks will be seen. A, C, V. These are the three upstrokes. And X and Y are the downstrokes. I have already told you why it appears like this. Okay. So, let's see. First, first upstroke A. Atrial systole. A is caused by the atrial systole naturally the first uh, rise of pressure then down slope starts because atrial diastole starts and pressure begins to fall but at the same time ventricular systole starts and at the onset of ventricular systole there is isovolumic contraction if you remember see let's have a diagrammatic view of this Isovolumic contraction of the right ventricle means what? The tricuspid valve has got closed but pulmonary valve is yet to open. It has not yet opened. So both valves are closed and right ventricle is contracting like a closed chamber. Its pressure is rising and there is no let off to that pressure. Both valves are closed. So, this build up of pressure in the right ventricle will cause ballooning backward of the tricuspid valve into the right atrium. The tricuspid valve will bulge backward or balloon backward into the right atrium. And that will cause slight rise of pressure in the right atrium. So, that is uh, recorded as C wave. So, let's uh, write it. C wave is caused by isovolumic contraction of the right ventricle. As I told you already, after the atrial systole, the other two peaks are because of the events in the ventricle. So, isovolumic contraction of the right ventricle causing bulging backward of the tricuspid valve look the tricuspid valve is closed and uh, the pressure is pent up in the right ventricle so you know the, the tricuspid valve just balloons backward so bulge backward tricuspid valve into the right atrium causing a rise of pressure in the right atrium and then soon what happens isovolumic contraction will be over for the ventricle the pulmonary valve will open and the ejection will start. So, now there is a let off to that rising pressure. The pressure that was penting up, building up, it has now a let off. And therefore, what happens? This ballooned tricuspid valve will come back to its normal position and the pressure will continue to fall in the right atrium. So, you understood this. Right atrial pressure was falling anyways because it's an atrial diastole. 
बट बिकॉज ऑफ दैट बल्ज बैकवर्ड ट्राइक स्पीड वाल जस्ट अ स्मॉल राइज ऑफ प्रेशर विल है इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सी वेव देन द प्रेशर विल कंटिन्यू टू फॉल एंड दैट्स गिवन एज एक्स डाउन स्लोप सो एक्स डाउन स्लोप इज बिकॉज ऑफ द राइट वेंट्रिकुलर इजेक्शन फेज इजेक्शन हैज स्टार्टेड एंड देर फोर द वाल्व केम बैक देन नेक्स्ट Ventricular systole is over and ventricular diastole starts. And at the start of ventricular diastole, there is isovolumic relaxation. If you remember, what is isovolumic relaxation? Look, pulmonary valve has got closed, but tricuspid valve is yet to open. It has not yet opened. Remember, that's how we described isovolumic relaxation. and since tricuspid valve is yet to open it has not yet opened therefore the blood coming from the periphery venous blood coming from the periphery accumulates in the right atrium till that point when a tricuspid valve would open and the blood will go into the ventricle it's relaxation yeah isovolumic relaxation and therefore this valve has not yet opened so the next upstroke next rise of pressure v wave it's because of the fact that venous blood accumulates in the right atrium because of the fact that tricuspid valve not yet opened so filling cannot start blood cannot go from right atrium to right ventricle as it is the isovolumic relaxation of the ventricle or to be more precise right ventricle in this case we are talking of right side of the heart okay so that uh, was the v wave and finally isovolumic relaxation will be over the tricuspid valve will open and this accumulated blood will go from right atrium to right ventricle and therefore the pressure of the right atrium will fall the accumulated blood is going down now and that fall of pressure is uh, recorded as y down slope so uh the y down slope indicates ventricular filling in this case right ventricular filling so uh, these are the waves that get recorded well there is one more wave which is sometimes described and that is x bar x dash or x bar wave well isovolumic contraction was over when c wave happened and then after that right atrial pressure continues to fall as it was ejection period okay uh, right ventricle was contracting now as the heart contracts i'm just trying to establish this why there is an additional wave sometimes recorded x bar wave this part is because the ventricular systole has started all right you remember ventricular systole has two types of movements two movements occur during systole one is the simple contraction movement but there is one more movement that happens uh, during the systole and that's a twisting movement heart is twisted during the systole that means the apex of the heart the conical apex of the heart moves towards the chest wall upward and base of the heart goes downward it's like this okay now because the base is going slightly down it pulls the right atrium at that point of time you will get this x bar wave an additional wave okay so pulling down of the base of the heart creates an additional wave called as x bar wave however these are the waves in the right atrium recorded over the internal jugular vein in the form of jvp so that is one part now let's try to understand a few more things related to the jvp i am i know jvp is discussed extensively in the medicine 
so to avoid overlap i will only touch upon those areas which are needed as a part of pathophysiology so what are those areas for instance a wave the abnormalities of the a wave a wave becomes large in for instance uh, tricuspid stenosis right in tricuspid stenosis right atrium is contracting against a stenosed tricuspid valve and therefore right atrial pressure increases tremendously and therefore the height of a wave also increases you know this that uh, height of any wave uh, represents the strength of contraction we've seen that in the muscle so uh, that's how there are large a waves then canon a waves also have been described so similar phenomena for instance uh, av dissociation atrioventricular dissociation when that is the case you will see canon a waves large a waves so why is that it's because see normally atrial and ventricular contractions and relaxations are in perfect harmony they are well associated i mean when the right atrium is contracting then at that point you need an open tricuspid valve and the ventricle should be relaxing so that's a normal thing that happens uh, in the cardiac cycle when right atrium contracting uh, tricuspid valve will be open right ventricle will be in relaxation mode but when there is a complete av dissociation it it happens because of the conduction abnormalities then right atrium contracts against a closed tricuspid valve yes because of a complete dissociation between the atrial events and the ventricular events no synergy and therefore in that case if the right atrium contracts against a closed tricuspid valve then that a wave a large wave canon a wave can be uh, recorded coming to the one more question i mean there there was a question clinical question like this a patient of suspected constrictive pericarditis was uh, brought to the hospital all the investigations were done so which of the waves will be found to be abnormal in the jvp and the options are a wave v wave x down slope y down slope what's your opinion on this the answer is y down slope yes think about this y down slope is created by what what does it represent the y down slope represents ventricular filling now if the condition is of constrictive pericarditis or cardiac tamponade what happens in those conditions there is restriction to the expansion of the heart during diastole and during filling the ventricles cannot expand normally and therefore they cannot accommodate the blood also normally so that's what happens in the uh, constrictive pericarditis and therefore what which wave will be abnormal the wave which represents the ventricular filling that will be abnormal because ventricles are unable to expand properly they are unable to accommodate the blood properly so that's uh, must be remembered in constrictive pericarditis cardiac tamponade why down slope will be abnormal now coming to the question which i asked you at the start of this uh, topic v wave is first of all the same pressure changes which i have said these are the right atrial pressure changes same pressure changes also will get recorded in the left atrium no two ways about it that's quite obvious but in the left atrium v wave is slightly larger what is the reason for that i told you the answer actually because the left atrium receives the blood from the lungs so let me just explain this part v wave is caused by what venous blood accumulated in the right atrium and therefore rise of pressure in the right atrium that is uh, what causing the v wave so left atrium will also get the v wave and it's because of the accumulation of blood in the left atrium but i'm saying v wave is larger in the left atrium why because almost 2% more blood 
gets accumulated in the left atrium as compared to right atrium compared to the right atrium 1 to 2 percent extra blood comes into the left atrium now you will be wondering what is that extra blood you have always always read that entire body's venous blood comes to right side of the heart then it goes in the lungs where it gets oxygenated and then comes back to the left side of the heart so it's the same blood no there is extra blood which is of bronchial venous blood you know uh, lungs have dual blood supply there is pulmonary circulation for gas exchange and there is bronchial circulation which is to supply oxygen to the connective tissue of the lungs and to the airways and the venous blood of that bronchial circulation does not go to the right side of the heart just like any other venous blood the bronchial vein joins the pulmonary vein and you know pulmonary vein means the oxygenated blood and it goes straight to the left atrium okay so remember two things left atrium and left side of the heart receives some amount of deoxygenated blood also and it's the bronchial venous blood and the second part is left side of the heart and left atrium receives 1 to 2 percent extra blood because this bronchial venous blood never went to right side of the heart it straight comes to the left side of the heart and mixes with the oxygenated blood so remember this and therefore if if the left atrium is receiving extra blood compared to right atrium then naturally v wave will be larger in the left atrium because v wave is caused by what accumulation of blood and therefore uh, some extra blood gets accumulated in the left atrium compared to right atrium and therefore v wave will be larger in the left atrium as compared to right atrium these were some of the uh, additional facets dimensions related to the atrial pressure changes the next part will be a big one and that's left ventricular pressure volume changes